about it right now, everything's okay. No matter where you find yourself, no matter what kind of stuff is going on in your life, underneath it all, everything's actually all right. You're okay. You have more power than you like to give yourself credit for. And if you have something that's going on in your life right now that's challenging or painful, it's just a reminder to take a little bit better care of yourself. Because you're worth it. You can have this feeling. So we're out here in the woods today. Um, I'm gonna do some campfire cooking. Uh, we're gonna make some rosemary thyme bread and some wild mushroom soup. Uh, today we're out at, it's actually a piece of property that's owned by my family. Um, typically we use this place more in the summer uh, just cause it's a little more grown up then, but I mean, it's still, it's it's nice because it's like a five minute drive from home and it's I don't know, we can get out in the woods a little bit. So this is where we test out gear, um, try new recipes, just come out and relax. We haven't been out here in probably close to a year, so we got some maintenance to do around the campsite, got some wood to process, gonna test out new axe that Amanda got me. Um uh, kind of excited to use that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna make some food. So stick with us, and it's gonna be a fun time.
definitely the weight of this axe is a little different than what I'm used to. But kind of getting a feel for it. It is balanced a lot differently. Wood's a little frozen. Coming apart nice. Try this piece. So, impressions of the new axe. I don't think I'd want to try to fell a tree with it, but to split wood, does the job just fine. Definitely handles a lot differently than the hatchet that I'm used to, so it's gonna take some getting used to, but definitely made me a nice tidy wood pile here. Um, edge held up nice. One thing that I think could be a problem with uh, the bearded profile here is if you catch a log down towards the bottom it's definitely going to damage the handle a little. I got a little bit of a ding already and it's not like I missed or anything but just it splitting it it's fairly fairly uh narrow so it doesn't split it out as quickly as like a normal profile hatchet um, as far as use for like fine carving tasks stuff like that where you choke up on the handle a little more handles pretty thick so I don't think I would select this for more like a fine carving tool or anything just the size of it the thickness of the handle but to split wood, hey, it's great. I thought it'd be more just like a novelty item, but it's definitely, definitely has some good use to it. So another tool for the toolbox. All right, I'll lay out a base for the fire here. I got a nice bundle of dry grasses. We're gonna use, um, I'm gonna use my ferro rod. Made the handle to this. Uh, it's a, I think out of maple. But nice thick half inch ferro rod, about six inches long. Very sturdy, very robust. It's Really never failed me, so. Do we have a spark yet? Yep.
grow a little more. Looking good. Stick some sticks right on top there. Build around it with some bigger pieces here. Beautiful. Definitely going to have to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, chop up some more wood. Not going to be enough to make the soup, but enough to get a good cold bed going. So stick around. We'll get the coals going and get some uh, soup on. So while we're out here uh, waiting for our bed of coals for cooking, um, I don't know, we can look around the campsite a little bit. Hi Amanda. Hi guys. So, there used to be a house back here. Um, I also used to be, I think, a, a gunsmith's workshop. Um, yeah, we got a foundation here. We got a little bit of a clearing. When I stay out overnight here, usually we put a tent over here. And there's some more foundations over over that direction. Um, yeah, like I said, this place is usually a lot more grown in, uh, but right now it's January, so doesn't seem like much at the moment. Fun fact, though, about the gun shop that used to be here. Um, did a little research based on some information that my grandpa gave me and I think it was Elmer Miller whose gun shop was back here um, the cool thing about him he I guess invented the first like reliable single trigger for a double barrel shotgun he actually has six patents for it so that's kind of cool we have found some old tools and stuff while we were here bottom of other shoe. days. Oh, yeah, in the bottom of a shoe. Got an old uh, old wrench. What's left of it? You can tell it used to be used to be adjustable at one point. Not so much anymore. So for the soup today, got some beef broth. This I actually kind of recycled it. It's from, uh, I made a uh, pulled beef on the smoker this week. I saved the broth from that. Uh, got some fresh parsley and thyme, some carrots, onion, garlic some wild rice oh jeez this is all out of focus sorry about that 
some wild rice, and then we've got some dried morel mushrooms. Um, we foraged these, I think, two years ago. Let's see if we can get a good picture of them at all. Damn. I got no clue when it comes to this lighting stuff, huh? Maybe. Maybe you can see. How do you hold a camera and hold something to look at and focus it? I don't know. I'll figure it out eventually. But yeah, real mushrooms. Uh, we also got some fresh, I think, button mushrooms and like a medley, medley mushroom medley. Oysters, shiitakes. Oysters, shiitakes, what else? Bellas? And bellas. All right. Well, Lots of mushrooms, mother good stuff. I'm hungry. Let's start. So we got water heating up for the uh, to rehydrate our morels, and uh, got the rice on, and that started. Got our carrot ready. Man is working on the garlic. I'm gonna check on the water for the morels. Sound good? Mm -hmm. And we had a bit of an incident earlier. Um, <laughs> wish I would have had the camera roll and then we could have one heck of a blooper reel. Uh, grill grate wasn't sitting just right, so the uh, bush pot with the rice in flipped upside down. We didn't lose really any rice, but we lost like all the water that was in it. Um, knocked over the Dutch oven with our bread. <laughs> so, luckily we saved everything, but jeez. If, uh, if I could mess it up today, I'm gonna mess it up today. I'm gonna grab the piece mm -hmm. of tip there. <clears throat> but yeah, the water is just about hot enough to rehydrate the morels. Let's see if I can get a better image of the morels this time. nice pint jar full. Be a good addition. Yeah, these are, what, two years old? I thought they were only a year. I thought we got these two years ago. Maybe they're only a year. But, yeah, two years ago, me, you, and the two other people we were with, we collected over 300 morels that season. Mm -hmm. I think we had over 100 this year too, but it wasn't well, this past year, but nothing compared to that last time. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. But this is the last of the ones we have. Um, hopefully we can get out again this year and forage for some. Uh, maybe we'll even video that without giving away our spot too much. You know, the, those who forage for mushrooms are a secretive bunch. Alright, so I've got hot water here. I'm going to get the mushrooms in.
Nice big chunks of mushroom. is cooking. Got the morels rehydrated. Actually gonna pour the water from rehydrating them and save that. You can use that in the soup. because we need to hang the Dutch oven. Take a look at that bread. Well, soon to be bread. Got a little extra piece of the leaves in it. From when it took a tumble. So this tripod's been standing sturdy for about two years now. Might drop that lower yet. But yeah, gonna get this bread cooking up. I'm gonna put some coals on top too. Once I lower my pot hanger a bit. That's a little lower. And a little lower. Might be too low now. See how that is. Solid. Some good heat underneath. I'm gonna move some of that wood around. Spread that out a little bit. Now we're cooking. As long as we're not running too hot underneath. I don't think we are. I think we're okay. So we just started heating up. Well, just started uh, sauteing the veggies a bit. We're gonna do them for a little bit. Add in some mushrooms. Rice is cooking. Bread's cooking. Checking out our rice here. Uh, maybe I can focus it. A little longer. A little bit longer? Yeah, still a good bit of water. There it is, I have some focus. Learning how to focus the camera. Still gotta get the lighting angles and all that nonsense down. 
tell you what, there's a lot more to this whole video and thing than I ever thought of. A whole lot more. And I'll tell you what, it really gives me a new respect for the guys that do this as like their job or like people that are actually good at this. There's a lot of these guys I watch just about every night. I don't know how you do it, but congratulations. Congratulations on doing it well, because <laughs> I know I'm not. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna check the bread here, see how it's doing. Oh yeah. Top's a little dark. I might have been a little too hot, but it looks good. I think it'll be be okay here. Nice and hot. Ooh. But yeah. I think the bread's done. So yeah, bread is done. It's a good sound to hear on bread. A little dark on top, but definitely not burnt by any means. Just darker than we usually do it. I think it'll have a nice crust on it. Let's see how the soup's doing over here. Just added in a big old pile of mushrooms here. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice big chunks of vegetables. Mushrooms are cooking up. One thing I gotta say, this lady here, she is the master of all things soup. <laughs> I, I certainly love soup. I make it quite a bit. <laughs> and I eat it quite a bit when she makes it. All right, so we just added the broth to the soup. And the rice is looking good. Smells amazing. I like having big chunks of mushrooms in my soup. So some of the smaller buttons we just left whole. Give it some texture and stuff. All that goodness. Salt and pepper. Give me a spoon, let me stir that in there. Nope, okay. I'm gonna make it a little creamy too. Can't wait to taste test this. Wow. Look at those mushrooms. The morels really look like they rehydrated well too. I'm interested to see how they taste. I'm 90% positive we dehydrated them two years ago. So, it'd be cool to see how they held up. I know we used them last year and they were just fine, but now we've used the, the last of the ones we had. I think I said earlier that uh, I made pulled beef barbecue earlier this week on the smoker, and uh, 
saved the broth from that and we put that in the soup. So it's going to have, I mean, we did skim a lot of the fat off of that, but it's going to have a lot of the flavor, hopefully some of that smokiness, some of the seasoning that I used. I had, I think it was like a chipotle garlic rub on the meat. Um, I guess I could have brought the leftover pulled beef and stuck this in the soup too, and make it a really Frankenstein stew, but yeah, we didn't really follow a recipe for this, so can't really tell you exactly <laughs> what's in it, but I mean, I can tell you what's in it, just not necessarily amounts, but that's how I make soup, but yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have enough water to make any coffee. I brought some coffee in a little, little bag that I made for Amanda. Um, it's full of coffee, but... Our rice incident had other plans. But since I'm at Drangus and uh, didn't stabilize the grate well at all, and it all tipped over, now we don't have any extra water. So, sorry for the no coffee, but... Uh, it's all good. So, I think soup's about done. Bread's had some time to sit and cool off. I'm gonna get out the bread saw. We're gonna cut into this bread. Oh yeah, that's good. That's real good. <laughs> so many uses for saws, huh? I also have a brownie axe. Just wait till I bust that out someday. Let me grab the soup. Dish it out right here. about every utensil you can think of. So we don't have like a big spoon or anything for the soup. I mean, yeah, normally we wouldn't carry that kind of stuff out in the woods, but since we're just out here to do some cooking. We have a few extra amenities. Nice short hike in, you know. Now this time of year we could have foraged for uh, probably some oyster mushrooms, but just really haven't had the time. But I'd like to go out and do a little foraging here. Some nice full bowls of soup. Is that enough for you? Mm -hmm. All right. There's your spoon. I'm gonna grab my spoon. Do a little taste test. And the sprigs of parsley. Hmm? And the sprigs of parsley. Oh, your, your garnishes. The garnish! You need your garnish. Put some leaves in the soup. It looks lovely. I don't think that's how you leaf your soup, but. Taste test time. Mm. You'd never know that these morels were dehydrated. They taste fresh. That's a great way to store them. Definitely would recommend dehydrating them. We just had them in a glass jar for like two years. And they taste just great. Try some of the bread here. Mm. It's rosemary thyme bread. Flakes apart real nice. A little bit crisp on the outside. 
super easy too. It only cooks for like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, it's uh, yeast, three cups of regular flour, like a tablespoon of thyme, a tablespoon of rosemary. Did I say the salt? Mm -mm. One and a half teaspoons of salt. Um, quarter cup of oil. Yeah, quarter cup of oil and cup and a quarter of water. And uh, we mix that up at home, let it rise a bit, carry it in here, let it sit for another hour or two, and then baked it. That's great. Try one of these big guys. Mm. The broth is so flavorful. We use the water from the rehydrating the morels plus the uh, beef broth. And it's great flavor. I don't really pick up any of like, the smokiness or the rub from my pulled beef, but that's all right. Definitely real heavy mushroom flavor. Veggies are done perfect. The wild rice is just right. Well, I'd say that was a successful uh, campfire cooking day. I think we're about ready to call it a day here though. We're gonna get things cleaned up, packed up, start tearing down camp. Um, yeah. In the future, we'll have some more campfire cooking videos, some camping videos, some bushcraft stuff. This was mostly just campfire cooking. But all in all, yeah, it's a good day. Great weather for it. It's January right now. It's uh, 40 degrees. I've had a really mild winter here in Pennsylvania. But, all right, well. Till next time, thanks for watching. See you again.